Okay, I've got another nonlinear system up here on the board. So x prime is x times 3x minus 4y. y prime is y times negative x squared minus y squared plus 25. And I've stated that for this system, x and y are representing quantities that are non-negative, so that we're just concerned with drawing the phase portrait in the first octant as we were in the last situation. So what I want to do in this video, and probably the next one or two as well, is try and get a phase portrait for this system, starting with the null climbs, looking at the information that that gives us, then looking at the equilibrium points and trying to um, linearize the system to see if we can classify those. Okay, so I'm going to start with my x null climbs. So if x prime is equal to zero, that's going to mean that either x equals zero or 3x minus 4y is equal to zero. Those are the two factors we have in x prime here. Solving this one for y, I get y is equal to 3 fourths x. Okay, so if x is equal to zero, that's the y-axis. I'm color coding, so I'm just going to make that y-axis purple. Find that very helpful, because remember, if x prime is zero, we're not going left or right, so we're just going up or down. So I'm going to have vertical tangent lines if I'm along this line. Basically, if I start on this line, I'm going to stay on this line and just go up or down. Um, and drawing in a bunch of vertical line segments on a vertical line, it's kind of hard to see. Okay. All right, if y is equal to 3 fourths x, that's just a line of slope 3 fourths through the origin. And here I can draw in that I will have vertical tangents. And once we've drawn in our y null climbs, we can take a look at are we going up or are we going down at those points. Okay, so let's take a look now at our y null climbs. So if I have a y null climb, that's going to mean that y prime is 0. So the two factors of y prime are y, so y could be 0, or negative x squared minus y squared plus 25 could be 0. And just adding over the x squared and the y squared, I get x squared plus y squared is 25. Okay. So y equals 0, that's the x-axis, so let's just make that pink. Now when y prime is 0, we're not going up or down. So we've got a horizontal tangent. This is just the equation for the circle of radius 5. So I'm going to just draw the quarter circle of radius 5 that's in the first octant. And I can go ahead and draw in along that quarter circle, we're going to have horizontal tangents. So now I can see from here where my equilibrium points are. Because remember, at an equilibrium point, both x prime and y prime are 0. So that has to occur when I've got the intersection of an x null climb and a y null climb. With the color coding, it's easy to spot. That's where purple meets pink. So we've got this point right here. And since the radius of this circle was 5, I know that's going to be 0, 5. Now I've got this point right here. <laughs> And what's kind of nice is the slope of this line, you might remember, was 3 fourths. So basically, I went up 3 and over 4. But if I went up 3 and over 4, those would be sides of a 3, 4, 5 triangle. And so I'm going to intersect the circle right there. So that tells me that this point is actually just the point 4, 3. Do be careful. It's 4, 3, not 3, 4. Okay, let's see. Here's pink meeting pink. That's not important. But here I do have purple meets purple meets pink. The significance is that purple meets pink, so the origin is also an equilibrium solution. So those are my equilibrium solutions for this particular system. So now that I've drawn all the null climbs, I can start filling in some arrows for when we're going up and when we're going down, or left and right. So let's just start along the x null climbs. Remember, along the x null climbs, I'm going to have vertical tangents. So I'm trying to figure out whether we're going up or down. So I know that x prime is 0. I'm concerned with what's the sign of y prime. So let's look over here. If I'm between 0 and 5 here, and I plug in such a number 
here, x is 0, y is between 0 and 5. So the y is going to be positive. Right. Negative x squared, that's just 0. Negative y squared plus 25 is going to be positive. Because if y is smaller than 5, y squared will be smaller than 25. So we're going up over here. Okay. So if I start on the y-axis, I'm basically going to go up and approach that equilibrium point. Now, if I'm above 5, this factor y is still positive. Negative x squared is still 0. But now negative y squared is bigger, has a bigger absolute value than 25. So now y prime is negative so that we're going down. Okay. All right. That's actually enough for me to figure out the signs, signs, sign, the directions. Arrows don't have signs. They have direction. The directions of the arrows here, because if you notice, I've got basically A, B, C, and D are the regions that the null lines break this quadrant into. And region A has this and this as a boundary. But I know my curves in region A can't change their vertical direction, so it's got to be consistent on all parts of the boundary. So this is going to be going up. By a similar argument, these arrows have to be going down because anything in B has to be going the same direction as the boundaries of B, so I can't have one boundary going down and one going up. All right, let's take a look at my Y null climbs. So now I know Y prime is zero, I'm looking at the sign of X prime to see whether we're going left or right. So Let's just take a look anywhere on the x-axis, because remember, this is not an equilibrium solution, so the sign cannot change along the positive x-axis. So if I look at the sign of x prime, x is going to be positive. 3 times x is going to be positive. Minus 4y is minus 0, because we're on the x-axis. So this is always going to be positive. I'm going to go ahead and draw in two arrows, but really this is just one region. That's always positive, always, always, always going to the right. Okay, so now that tells me that these tangent lines have to also be going to the right, because if I look at the boundary of D, these two boundaries are on y null clines, but they have to have the same orientation. So that in D, I'm going right and up. Because I can't change direction unless I hit a null cline. Okay. All right, so let's see. Now I want to know what's happening over here. I want to know whether these are going left or right. And it actually looks like we're going to have to plug in a point. Oh my goodness. Um, who'd have thunk? But yeah, I don't have any other information about either B or A in the horizontal direction of things. Okay. So let's just observe this point 4, 3 is right here. The point 3, 4 would also be on this circle. So I'm going to just plug in 3, 4 to x prime and see what I get. Okay. So that's going to be 3, which is positive, okay. times 3x would be 9, minus 4y would be 16. That would be a negative number. Positive times negative is negative. So we're going to be going to the left here. Okay. So basically, if we're in region A, we're going up and left. If we're in region B, we're going down and left. If we're in region C, we're going down and right. And if we're in region D, we're going right and up. Okay. Excellent. So I think what I'm going to do is actually stop this video here because we've been going for a little while. Um, in the next video, let's try and draw in some possible solution curves starting at various points. Okay. Um, and then we will classify the equilibrium points as well.